This is the first video in a five-part series where I'll show you how to build a robust and versatile woodworking bench to which I'll also attach my new bench table saw and a router table. This is the 3D SketchUp file included in the plans, available on my website. As you can see in the animation, I'm going to install two folding tables to save space when I'm not using my bench, as well as to have more space to work when necessary. I'll also make a sliding carriage for more accurate and comfortable crosscuts. I'll start off by showing you how to build the frame. First, we'll make the four outer legs. I've cut a piece of wood which I'll use to space the pieces evenly. I apply glue on the wood and use nails to secure the pieces. I clamp two legs at a time. Don't forget the legs must be symmetrical. Now I'll move on to the four inner legs. I follow the same steps as when I build the outer legs to make tenons and mortises, but these are a little different. In order to make the assembly process easier, I ordered cut to size frame pieces and cabinets in the same place where I bought the board. If you want to do this project and you already have a bench saw, you can cut them yourself at home. Now, in much the same way, I'll make two mid rails. They're a little bit easier. Next, I'll mark the two top rails on the right side, where the router will go. As you may have noticed, from the beginning I've been marking the spots where I'll put glue on the pieces. Now I'll make the top rail for the left side, where I'll place the sliding carriage. And now the back rail. These two are a little different. Lastly, I'll make two long bottom rails. First, I'll make sure all the pieces are the right size. I'm going to need a few clamps to apply pressure evenly. I'll run some tests to see how good the mortise and tenon joints are, and they seem to be perfect.
With a hand plane, I cracked the inner rebate of some of the legs which needed it. In order to assemble the frame, I need to drill some holes on the legs. Some 20 millimeter diameter holes for the hole fast clamps. and some more holes for the folding table axis on the left side. Now I can start putting together the parts that make up the frame. I'll do this bit by bit, joining one of the long bottom rails with the two legs and the short top rail. I put low pressure on the clamps and finish tightening them little by little once they're all in place and after making sure they're square. Once the glue is dry, I turn the frame to glue the mid rail on. First I drill some holes for some dowels that will strengthen the bond. I'll send down the inner side of the frame, now that it's more convenient. Now on to the inner cabinets. First of all, I'll make sure the pieces are the proper size by inserting them into the frame rebates. With the table saw and several runs, I make channels for the drawers to slide on. I'll definitely need a dado blade for these cuts. In the SketchUp design, I join the cabinets with screws. This works fine, but in my case, I'll use some biscuits. I apply glue and then clamp them together. Now I'll follow the same steps with the router cabinet. In the cabinet, the top piece is lower, at medium height more or less. Before putting this cabinet together, I cut a notch on the outer side so that I can later add a power switch. And now comes my favorite part, joining the modules with the frames. Before using glue, I make sure the cabinets fit into the rebates. I apply glue, insert the cabinet, and put pressure with clamps. I follow the same steps with the second module. Once the glue is dry, I can glue the second frame part on. This time I have to glue on two modules at the same time. I need all my clamps for this step. Before moving on, I'll fasten these small pieces with glue until that part is thick enough to later attach the wheels with screws. I'll also glue another piece like this one in the middle of the bottom of the frame. 
Once the glue is dry, I smooth down all the frame joints with a hand plane. With a saw and a chisel, I make channels for the drawers in the front of the frame. Once I'm done, I'll screw the wheels to the bench. I only have four wheels in the shop. I'll add the two middle ones later on if necessary. And also some metal plates to reinforce the bottom shelf. I turn the bench and check how firm and stout it's going to be. Now I make some recesses to the central shelf, where I will be placing the bench table saw. I make sure everything's as it should be, and see if I can use the saw fence. Now is also a good time to finish the electrical installation. It's quite simple. I'll use a power strip and an emergency paddle switch. I fasten a junction box with screws to protect the back of the switch, as well as an outlet for the router. After screwing a power strip to the bench and checking all the connections, I make sure everything's working correctly. That's all for today. In a few days I'll upload the second video, where I'll be showing you how to make a sliding carriage.